and welcome to the Open Book Channel, where I talk about anything and everything writerly, very, very honestly. A couple of months ago, there was a stir in the book community over an article written by Jeff Sexton called The Troubling Trend with ARC Readers. This article went on a tangent about the increasing frequency with which people who receive advanced reader copies of books don't leave reviews and how Sexton would like to draw a line, claiming that the act of not reviewing a book under that obligation is, in fact, stealing. Of course, this ruffled a lot of feathers, because there's always two sides to any situation. Painting such a broad black and white stroke across the entire practice of leaving ARC reviews is a bold move to be sure. That said, I think a large portion of the writing community took what Sexton had to say much too specifically. It's easy to pick apart the flaws in Sexton's argument through the examples that he chooses to support his position on his high horse. For example, putting responsibility on a reviewer to have the quote-unquote courtesy to respond to unsolicited ARCs sent by publishers. That's just unreasonable. Obviously. And of course, you can't condemn the act of not leaving a review as immoral to the point of illegal without taking into consideration that a reviewer might elect not to leave a review for personal reasons. Not just that they didn't have time to read the book, but that perhaps they're uncomfortable doing so, or came to an understanding after the fact that they weren't the target demographic and didn't want to review bomb something out of personal preference, while also not wanting to lie about what they thought about it. There's a lot of nuance to the discussion that makes it impossible to say something as plainly as not leaving an ARC review makes you a thief. But I thought I'd play a little devil's advocate here. I think the sentiment behind the bold claim of theft is valid, at least understandable. I'm not looking at this from a personal perspective. When I read the article myself, I took into consideration the perspective that Sexton was coming from as an avid ARC reviewer himself, of which I am not. Aside from tangents which paint Sexton as expecting far too much from the average reviewer, I think that it got lost in the discussion that he was originally specifically referring to dedicated ARC reviewers, who are enlisted in programs and potentially receive pay for the reviews. I think that most of us can agree that once a monetary arrangement has been struck, it is much closer to theft on the part of someone who receives an ARC that doesn't leave a review because they are not providing a service that they were paid for. There are always extenuating circumstances, of course. But even in that, I believe the sentiment underlying the article is more valid than people are giving it credit, because it's being dismissed by its bolder, more unreasonable claims. At least for me, I think art copies do hold a higher obligation than other read-for-review systems. The point of ARC reviews really is their timeliness. They are intended to generate demand and intrigue for a book during its release. And in this, I am not specifically referring to those who are paid for ARC reviews. I just mean anyone who gets an ARC. As a writer, if I give an ARC copy to a reviewer, I would expect that they provide the review in the given time frame or not accept the copy in the first place. Otherwise, I wouldn't have given them a copy. That's kind of the point. ARCs are an obligation of expectation, otherwise they don't hold value as an ARC anymore. Otherwise they're not an ARC anymore. The tone of Sexton's article is very smart kid in the class getting mad at the slower students for not finishing their book reports, so the teacher pushed the deadline back even though he put in the work to get it done on time. And I get it, but I was also that kind of kid too, so I can kind of see his side of things. Because I do believe that the value of an arc is in its delivery, and I believe that any copy of a book given with the expectation of a review is a promise. It's not all that complicated or controversial until you get into semantics, it's just being a good person. As much as the article takes the stance of resign if you can't commit, if you say it less harshly than that, it is a fair point that's looking out for both the authors that are depending on reviews and the reviewers that are being made to feel shitty by this whole discourse and backlashing because they feel like they're being attacked because they put too much on themselves. Reviewers shouldn't be overcommitting. They need to understand their limitations and not burn themselves out. It's a mental health thing. And I should specify here what I consider a review. I realize that some people write essays about books in their review. They make a blurb in their own words and dive into how much they liked each character. I don't I don't mean that when I'm referring to the ability and need to leave a review. 
If you're given a book under the expectation of giving it a review, I think that the least you could do is leave it a star rating. That's it, really, heck, a sentence or two. Because I think that any rating is better than no rating, even if that means it's a bad rating. Something that you hate could be something that someone else loves, but they need other people's opinions to exist on it first to know that. But that's just my opinion. Let me know in the comments below what you think about all of this. I'll link to the original article so you can read it yourself too. It's, it's pretty short, don't worry. <laughs> Where do you fall on the spectrum of ARC reviews being considered thieves for not reviewing? Put yourself on this little scale here. I am here. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support me and this channel, there's a link to my Ko-fi in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and a special thank you to all the open book supporters. You're the best, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!